Hello, my name is Kazim Omidiji, the Director of Community Relations at San Diego Gas and Electric, and also one of 4,600 employees who work at scg &E regionally. As the cost of living continues to rise here in our region, many families are challenged with providing for their own basic needs to thrive within our communities. That's why scg &E is investing $10 million in shareholder funding through our Community Assistance Fund to help provide transformational level grants to our local nonprofits and expand their essential services to those who need it the most. Our grants will provide tangible, on-the-ground support such as food pantries and emergency rental assistance for those at risk of food insecurity and homelessness. At sdg &E, our values to do the right thing, champion people, and shape the future governs everything that we do. Together, we can create a stronger, healthier community where everyone thrives. CBS 8 is always working for you, but we're not the only ones working for our community. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Jenny Day. To make our community as strong and resilient as possible, it requires the help of everyone, from our neighbors and community leaders to our incredible nonprofit organizations and strong business sector. San Diego is home to one of the largest military populations in the United States, of course. As this group serves our country, they are faced with unique challenges. CBS 8's Alex Kleinman starts us off to share how one charity supports military families really in dire situations. For more than a decade, Support the Enlisted Project has helped any military family in financial crisis. The charity, also known as STEP, provides a guiding light for those families struggling in darkness with complete understanding and without judgment. I relate to him because these are my people. This is who I am. Tony Taravainen sees a lot of himself in the people that he helps every day. I understand what my mom went through as a 20-year-old military spouse with two kids and a dad that just got shipped back to Southeast Asia for the second time. As CEO and co-founder of STEP, Tony has helped thousands of military families keep a roof over their head and food on their plate. The families that we're serving are in extremely complex situations. Um, they're dire. In those situations, STEP gives people emergency funding, but anyone who walks through the door is connected with a social worker who's also a financial expert. Our ultimate goal is to make this their last crisis. Tony says that the program has a 90% success rate. Only 3% have ever come back needing more money. Tracy Owens, STEP's program manager, says that STEP helps families in many other ways. The cost of living is very high here in San Diego, and military pay doesn't go quite as far as it does in other parts of the, the world. Since STEP started 11 years ago, they have given out $2.5 million in emergency grants to more than 7,400 military families, stopped about 600 evictions, and distributed over 450,000 diapers. Those resources will help them offset the cost of things so that they don't have to make a decision between paying a light bill or putting diapers on their baby. Critical supplies are given out at regular distribution drives, such as one that happened at Camp Pendleton in October. Uh, uh, no. Where'd she go? Riley Johnson, who lives on base while her husband serves in the Navy, says that these drives are important because she usually doesn't qualify for government aid. You know, it's scary with two kids to, to have to think about food options. Just any relief has been extremely helpful. I was gonna ask about your annual budget, but I heard, you know what, this is probably gonna make a dent. This summer, sdg &E gave STEP their largest grant ever, $400,000. That's enough to help 600 families with emergency funding. It's hard to describe how immediate it is. As Thanksgiving approaches, Military families are reaching out to STEP for help. How am I going to be able to take care of my family and have food on the table during this time when we're already challenged financially? That's where the charity steps in with their holiday food drives. 25% of the families said if they didn't get this from us, they wouldn't have a Thanksgiving meal. For more on how to support STEP, go to teamstepusa.org. Alex Kleinman, CBS 8. Yes, strong start, Alex. Thank you. Well, meantime, another local nonprofit says when it rains, it pours literally in one of their houses, but 
Not anymore. For months, we've been following this story about the Sister League of San Diego, which provides transitional housing for women who were once homeless. Four months ago, CBS 8's Abby Black covered the charity needing a new roof, of course, expected to cost thousands of dollars. Now she's back with an update and shows how a generous local roofing company nailed it. The power of CBS 8's working for our community is hard at work. This is a story that's been four months in the making. Now, Sister League has a new roof at no cost to them. In June, it's, it's really important for like the community to rally behind us. CBS 8 introduced you to Sister League, a nonprofit that provides transitional housing and resources to women who were once homeless, survivors of domestic violence, and affected by mental illness. A roof is important. What is a home without a roof? But the women living here will tell you the roof needed a lot of work. It gets wet every time it rained a little bit. It went in the room and it went in the little bathroom up there. A tall order, but CBS 8 got to work for our community. Sometimes we immediately thought yes. Charles Antis is in the roofing business but he says the real work goes into giving back. We all sleep better at night when we do this, and our work becomes so much more valuable. CBS 8 surprised Sister League's executive director with the big news. We are going to donate your entire roof system and we're going to come install it with all of our partners in the trades. Once the work started this week, they found their roof was in worse shape than they first thought. I mean, their roof's really bad. Not only is it worn, but the flashings are rusted out. There's dry rot. The cost for the new roof went up to $50,000. The fact that Antis didn't even hesitate when an extra $20,000 got tacked on to what was already a $30,000 project is uh, really amazing. Antis didn't do this alone. They got suppliers to donate all the materials and lunch for the wrap party. It just kind of really restores my faith in our San Diego community. Antis Roofing joins Jerome's Furniture in helping Sister League chip away at its list of $100,000 in repairs and upgrades for both of their homes. We're very, very appreciative. This is how we work for our community. And thank you, CBS, for just really recognizing and, and highlighting us. We are together in community, and it makes us better, it makes us stronger, it makes us happier. Let's continue to raise the roof and help the Sister League knock off some of its costly repairs. To learn more, go to cbs8.com backslash working for our community. Yes, so generous and so much good happening out there. Abby, thank you. Well, now to a nonprofit in Vista with a 94% success rate when it comes to housing homeless families. I got the chance to sit down with Solutions for Change and share one of their many success stories. That's what my life turned into is just, uh, you know, times of sobriety and then times of addiction. Jessica Kidd is a fantastic mom, but admits she hasn't always been. April of next year, I'll have four years clean. Um, just my whole life changed, yeah. like I'm a new person today. A death in the family left her spiraling. She says she lost her direction and like so many, prescribed prescription pills opened the door to addiction and a life on the street. That was like the most pushing moment in my life, like, oh my God, Jessica, you're sleeping behind a couch. That life led to a court battle to regain custody of her kids. I was there when her daughter got home from daycare. She'll never know what it is for me to be in an addiction. She'll never know um, chaos in the home. Um, we have a lot of consistency and love in our home. She also has a 16 year old son who's into sports and has dreams of becoming a chef. He's glad to have his mom back. Just thinking back to like all those years, you know, she she did all she could and look where, to, where it got her. So I'm just thankful for that yeah. every day. They say God and the nonprofit solutions for change are behind their happy family. Just seeing what she went through, I know that that's not the place I want to go in life, and I just pray to God every day to keep me strong. It was one day in court when Jessica grabbed a Solutions for Change pamphlet from the wall, shoved it in her purse, and months later made the call. I just let the treatment center know that I was committed and I was going to do this, and I did just that. Get this, she now works for the nonprofit and has set a goal to help other families achieve that second chance. I was able to greet people and smile and know about the program and just be of, you know, be of help to others. And so I found like my self-worth in that. 
Solutions for Change is a 700-day program. About 43 families experiencing homelessness or addiction live here for the first 500 days. I was 12. I just remember playing uh, basketball a lot. I had a couple friends here. They offer treatment programs, courses on self-care, meditation, job training, and more. Jessica improved her credit score, opened a bank account, bought a car, and has moved into a home. I realized that nobody was hurting me more than I was hurting myself. And so I realized if um, I could put myself in such a low place in life that I was able to get myself out of that too. As those at Solutions for Change work to turn their lives around, you too can help. We are really in need of volunteers and people who want to assist with our, our little ones just to be able to help our parents um, do their workshops and get to their meetings and make progress in the program. Monetary donations are also always accepted. Working for our community in Vista, Jenny Day, CBS 8. Yes, such a sweet family with a very bright future, thanks to our nonprofits. Well, CBS 8 also recently had Bill Payne, president and CEO of Second Chance, join us right here in studio. He shared how they are working to break the cycle of incarceration. Recently, they celebrated their efforts with a big ceremony as 15 formerly incarcerated people restarted their lives through Second Chance's job readiness training program. CBS 8's Chris Grow has more from the very emotional ceremony. Yeah, and it'll be 15 graduates who are getting a chance to share this moment with either friends, family, or simply just finally making it a dream come true, finally realizing their potential uh, that they feel like they haven't been able to attain. And you can see inside the ceremony right now happening, we did meet one graduate, Jacob, who says his outlook on his future completely turned around. I think it's just... When you look at me on paper, it may not look very favorable because of the mistakes of my past, perhaps, but yeah, that's something that's really been a setback. It's been encouraging and supportive and informative. The enthusiasm of the staff, the energy of my classmates, and real evidence and information that's useful. Yeah, Jacob's story again, similar to the 14 other classmates in this four week program. Those that enroll in Second Chance were often incarcerated. They have criminal history or dealing with something else that was holding them back, either unemployed or unable to hold a job for too long. But this program, it aims to end that. It's four weeks of training. It focuses on first and foremost, improving a participant's self-esteem and their outlook on their future and what it is that they can achieve. It teaches them skills to find a job like resume building, interviewing, networking, then skills to keep that job like team time management, teamwork, professional attitudes, and just how to interact with others in a progressive way. Now, for a lot of participants that go through this program, they haven't had access to resources like this, especially if they were incarcerated. And so this is a chance for them to utilize those resources put them to work and it doesn't just end with the four-week program we heard one of the instructors speaking to them talking to them about hey if you get this job or you get into this program share it with this group network try to make sure that we can all hold each other up again uh, the 15 people now making their way through this program much brighter future than just four weeks ago back to you guys more good stuff, Chris, thank you. Well, many of the charities we discussed are working for our community to improve our quality of life, but the San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation is fighting something that poses a threat to our entire community, and that is wildfires. That's why firefighters and dedicated community leaders started this local nonprofit, and thanks to generous donations, the foundation is now preparing the firefighters of today for whatever battle faces them tomorrow. Minutes make a difference. It's so much safer, so much quicker that we hey, we have to have these. The San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation is credited with saving lives behind the scenes. I will never run into a burning building. I will never, you know, rescue somebody from the side of a road or, or a cliff or wherever. But the fact that I can put tools in their, their hands so that they can do their job better and protect our community, amazing. The foundation helps bridge the gap from what the city's budget does and doesn't cover for firefighters, paramedics, and lifeguards by enhancing equipment, technology, and training. Anyone who supports the foundation is a hero in my book. Sometimes five, ten dollar donations come from individuals who just want to say thank you. Other times, grant money is secured or corporations step up. 
Following the Cedar Fire in 2003, when flames got far too close for comfort, Ray McEwen wanted to donate a brush rig. It's all terrain and goes where fire trucks can't go. They were in my neighborhood with trucks on the perimeter. They lost a couple houses. They saved the rest of them, including mine. And if you're feeling inspired by all of the good work that's happening here, you, of course, can make a tax-deductible donation. They're in need of really tools of all kind to help clear brush. Really, chainsaws would be helpful right now, as well as those protective chaps. One of my top priorities right now is the tourniquet. These are about $40 a piece, and that's not expensive, but when you have to outfit a 1,000 firefighters, it adds up. A thousand firefighters across 52 different stations benefit from the public-private partnership. Fire Rescue Foundation funded these. Uh, this is an example of something that we use when we need to get out of a building quickly. Most recently, the life-saving donations have helped purchase the Genesis Rescue Tool, better known as the Jaws of Life, and multi-gas detectors. They can look for flammable gases, uh, oxygen saturations. Anything that we can do to enhance that really is an investment in public safety. The San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation also educates, recruits, and supports future firefighters. I feel completely blessed to have worked almost 30 years now with so many brave uh, men and women on San Diego Fire Rescue. To find out how to donate, head to CBS8.com. For CBS8, I'm Jenny Day. Yeah, and firefighters and police officers in East County also spent the month of October raising money and growing out their mustaches, all for a good cause. As the finale to the 13th annual October stash quickly approached, I got the chance to share how two worthy families will benefit from this group effort. From the Fu Manchu to the handlebar, the annual FDPD October stash is in full swing. Cool to see how big it's become and how much we can actually help and the impact that we're able to have. It started as a friendly competition among East County police and firefighters. 14 agencies are involved today. But it started out as a group of guys like shaving for the month of yeah. October and throwing money into a pot. Winner that year ended up donating the pot to one of the guy's sister who had breast cancer. And like the stashes, the generosity only continued to grow. FDPD October stash is now a nonprofit that helps countless families and causes. We've done Challenge Athletes Foundation, uh, Shelter to Soldiers, uh, make a wish. They do typically look for a local family first. This year, there are two families who will receive the money raised. I think it's mind blowing to them that total strangers that they really don't know are all showing up donating money for a good cause. The Yeager family is one recipient this year. Mom Sarah is an El Cajon Police Department communications dispatcher. Dad David works for Cal Fire. Their daughter Maddie died one month ago at the age of 23 from leukemia. We support local families that are in need and uh, it's awesome to do. The Durrells are the second family to benefit from October stash, specifically Ashley, a mom of two little girls. Her dad is the battalion chief for San Miguel. She has glioblastoma, which is a rare form of brain cancer. For a young person to have a diagnosis like that is heartbreaking and very scary. And it makes you not take life for granted. And that could happen to anybody. Happy to report she just recently announced there's been no new growth. These crews save lives every day, so their nonprofit is right on par, and they do so in a fun way. October 28th, uh, we'll be doing a ping pong and cornhole tournament actually here at the Reagan Center. Um, so that'll be on Saturday from 11 to 6. So if anybody wants to come out and just watch, hang out, or compete, um, they're more than welcome to. Then the finale that includes a raffle and mustache contest will be held on November 4th from 4 to 9 at Burning Beard Brewing Company in El Cajon. We have seven different categories, so even people that can't grow mustaches, there's a category for that, so it's all fun and games. If you can't make it, I'll put a link to donate on CBS8.com. Working for our community in El Cajon, I'm Jenny Day. 
Yeah, and this here was another great success. I hope the show just lifts you up and gives you some hope. Meantime, San Diego's LGBTQ Community Center recently celebrated a major milestone, 50 years of service. They honored this occasion with a gala that brought together many different groups and local leaders, including Mayor Todd Gloria. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe shows how the gala celebrated the center's history and how far San Diego's LGBTQ community has come. San Diego's LGBT Community Center has reached a major milestone. We are one of the oldest and most vibrant LGBT centers in the country. I'm here to not only celebrate, but to also, you know, be an ally in the fight for justice. For the past 50 years, the center has been instrumental in providing services to the LGBTQ community. It's decades in the making, starting off as a answering machine in a utility closet in Golden Hill. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. The event brought out a large and vibrant crowd of community members, business leaders, civic leaders, and advocates, including San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria. The San Diego LGBT Community Center is the second oldest and third largest center of its kind in the country. San Diego has been on the forefront of LGBTQ equality for 50 years, and that's what we're celebrating. The nonprofit currently provides more than 80,000 service visits a year to the community, helping people get access to housing, behavioral health, support, and the and more. This organization saves people's lives. For young people who are coming out and don't have social support, to people who are in need of health or mental health care, this organization fills those gaps. So what's important about this event is it's supporting our direct services that include housing, food services, mental health counseling, uh, youth services, and it's supporting our advocacy and civic engagement. Senior Director of Development at the LGBT Community Center, Ian Johnson says the event offers a chance for supporters of the organization to see how they and the center continue to create meaningful change. I'm extremely uh, proud that the organization steps up to the needs of our community and is giving people the support they need. Rocio de la Fe there reporting. Well, we are now learning more about how the Southern California Tribal Chairpersons Association is making life better for local tribes. Heather Myers recently talked with Robert Smith, chairman of the association and the Pala Band of Mission Indians to learn more about the critical issues that are facing these tribes. Let's just jump right in. For folks who are not familiar with the organization, what is SCTCA? The Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association established a nonprofit in 1972 with 18 tribes in the county of San Diego and 25 total tribes in Riverside and San Bernardino County. We help uh, serve uh, Indians on welfare, safety, education, cultural, economic, and employment needs in our area. Now, I know the group was a recent recipient of one of SDG&E's uh, Community Assistance Fund grants to the tune of $500,000. Uh, tell me a little bit about that money, where it goes, and how it serves members of the tribe. Okay, it's for low-income low individuals uh, ages 18 to 40, for individuals experiencing food and housing insecurity. So 25 members from each reservation will be awarded. If they decline, we'll move on to other members that could really use it. So. It's really to help people with the cost of food, fuel, and everything nowadays with inflation. Right. Well, tell me a little bit about some of the needs of some of the members of the tribes. You mentioned food and housing insecurity. Uh, for, for folks who may not be familiar with some of what some tribal members are up against on a daily basis, you mentioned inflation, but that's not all. Yeah, lo uh, low-income individuals, you know, a lot of them are on a fixed income, elderly, and they're on a fixed income with Social Security. They may have uh, single parents with four to five kids, so they're really struggling with rent and food. So we're trying to assist them, and this grant will help us do that through SDGD. Robert, people might see the sign for Paula up on the 15 freeway and have never had an opportunity to stop off and experience all that uh, the the area has to offer. Tell us a little bit about that for a moment. Well, Paula's uh, we're a reservation in North San Diego County and the Palomar foothills. We have a Paula Casino Resort and Spa. So we have, you know, table games, food restaurants, uh, slot machines, and entertainment. We also have a lot of culture and history of our reservation. So we're located six miles off the Interstate 15 to the east. Fantastic. Robert, anything else that you would like to share with our viewers today about uh, SCTCA and all that the organization does? Well, again, we're a nonprofit and we help 
any, any uh, Native American community that wants help. And I think it's a good partnership with San Diego Gas and Electric to help us with this insecurity of food and inflation costs for needy families. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Robert Smith, Chairman thank of you. SCTCA and the Paula Band of Mission Indians. Do appreciate it. Yeah, I've been there myself. It is beautiful. Thanks for shedding some light. And thank you for joining us. And thank you to SDG&E, the sponsor of this Working for Our Community special. I'm Jenny Day for CBS 8 Plus. Certainly keep up the great work. Truly happy to shed light on all of the good. See you next time and take good care.